Hey, Psych2Goers. Do you remember more of being scolded or being praised as a child? Which one stuck with you the longest? We often have the tendency to repeat negative and bad memories more often than the positive ones. These words carry weight since there's a greater cellular activity in the brain when negative memories are formed. Because of this, it's important to be careful with the way you speak to your children as it can stick with them for a really long time. To learn more about this, here are six things parents should never say to a child. Number one, you can't do anything right. Were you ever told this when you did something wrong? Patience is a trait not everyone naturally possesses, but it's important for parents to cut down on these types of remarks whenever your child isn't performing up to caliber. It serves no purpose other than to belittle them, which can discourage and do more harm than good to their growth. This phrase can also lead them to set unrealistically high expectations for themselves that can lead to feelings of inadequacy and resentment later in life. Number two, I'm disappointed in you. This may be something you often say to your child when they've failed to meet your expectation or standard, but it can actually be quite damaging and harmful for them to hear it especially for younger children. According to Dr. Lim Boom Leng from Psychological Wellness in Singapore, your children are more susceptible to their parents' moods than older ones. Thus, it's important to tone down your statements like this since it can end up bruising your child's self-esteem and confidence. Number three, you should be like your brother or sister. Were you ever compared to your siblings before? It's crucial to recognize that children are individuals with their own personalities and traits that make them unique. Instead of telling your kid that they should be more like their sibling or classmate who may excel at a certain field or subject like sports, praise them for their strength in the things that they're good at, like literature or the arts instead. There's no one perfect role model and needlessly comparing your child to someone else's or their sibling can make them feel inadequate. Number four, it's your fault that something bad happened. It's normal for every parent to feel upset, angry, and frustrated at times at the things that their children do. However, it's very important to be careful with the words you use when you're feeling that way. Children, especially the younger ones, are not able to differentiate your anger as an expression of frustration from an attack on them and therefore their sense of self-worth. For example, if an emotionally taxing event like the death of a pet occurs because of your child's negligence, it can be a burden for everyone. But in moments like these, it's crucial to take the time to be compassionate and to educate them on how to deal with their sadness rather than assigning blame. This will help them understand how to navigate emotional turmoil, which is something they can carry for the rest of their lives. Number five, don't cry. Do your parents get uncomfortable with emotional outbursts and tell you to stop? Telling a child not to cry can teach them to conceal their emotions. This can make it more likely for them to develop mental health issues in both the short and long term. Similarly, phrases like don't be sad or calm down should be avoided. Research published in Washington State University shows that being able to openly acknowledge how you're feeling no matter how negative it is can help improve mental health for both parents and children. And number six, you're the best at everything you do. Remember that. While warranted praise is healthy, giving undue credit can actually be bad for them. Some children who are praised too frequently can develop a sense of entitlement and become overconfident in their abilities. At the same time, others who are praised a lot can end up feeling immense pressure from the expectations that their parents set on them. This may cause them to fail to act or become unwilling to try new things. The best approach is to give specific and honest feedback. For example, instead of saying your child is the best at soccer, be specific about their positive traits, like how they're an excellent leader who motivates their teammates during games. Did you relate to any of these signs above? Let us know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with those who might benefit from it. And don't forget to hit the notification bell icon to get notified whenever Psych2Go posts a new video. The references and studies used in this video, as always, are added in the description below. Thanks for watching, and see you in our next video.